Hello grade 11s. In this video, we are going to learn how to construct a cumulative frequency graph, also known as an ogive, and how to use this graph to determine important statistical information. In statistics, frequency is used to describe the number of times a given quantity or value occurs in a set of data. For example, the frequency distribution of income in a population will show how many individuals have a certain level of income. When we have large amounts of data, we group it into sets called class intervals. These class intervals make it easier to work with and to analyze the data. Using a frequency table, we can find the cumulative frequency and draw a cumulative frequency graph. This is also sometimes known as an ogive. When analyzed, these graphs provide useful information. We're going to start by looking at road accident victims. A hospital has collected data on when road accident victims come into the emergency ward. Let's see how to plot cumulative frequency graphs and how to analyze them using this data. I want to show you how to draw a cumulative frequency graph. For the frequency polygon, we use this frequency table to plot each point. We're going to add a column to this table and I'm going to label it cumulative frequency. In this column, we can put it in the running total of the number of injuries due to road accidents. The values in the column for cumulative frequency tells us how many people were admitted in total before a particular time of day. To find the cumulative frequency, I need to add up all the frequencies in the previous row of the table. The first cumulative frequency will be the same as the frequency because there is nothing to add up yet, so it will be 34. The next cumulative frequency will be 34 plus the value of the second class interval. That's 76. So to get the cumulative frequency, we just add 76 to 34 and get 110. To find the third cumulative frequency, we can add 38 to our running total. That will give us 148 so far. Can you work out the rest of the cumulative frequencies? You should get 171, then 237, then 322, then 409, and lastly 453. So, the total frequency or cumulative frequency of road accident victims admitted to this hospital over the years was 453. So by 9 o'clock in the morning, 110 people had already been admitted to hospital due to road accidents. Remember, this value does not represent the accident on only one day. It represents the total number of people sent to this hospital as a result of a car accident before 9 in the morning over the whole year. Now that we have these totals, we can plot our own cumulative frequency graph. As with the frequency polygon, we can use the same class intervals of 3 hours on the horizontal axis, the x-axis. So, the x-axis represents the time of day. The vertical axis or y-axis will represent the cumulative frequency. So, we need to choose a suitable scale for the y-axis. What scale would you use to make sure that your graph is clear and as big as possible on your paper? The maximum number we need to plot is 453. The smallest value or the minimum value of the graph will be 34. So, let's take the y-axis up to 500 and mark intervals of 50 off for every 50 people. We can mark off 0, 50, 100, 150, and finally 500. Now, we can plot the end point of each class interval against the cumulative frequency. So, the first point we can plot will be at 6 o'clock on the x-axis and 34 on the y-axis. The next point must be plotted at 9 o'clock and 110. The next will be at 12 o'clock at 148. When this is finished, we end up with 453 at 3 o'clock. When you have filled in all the points from your table, the points can be joined. We can label the x-axis with time of day and we can call the y-axis cumulative frequency. We will call the graph cumulative frequency of road accident victims admitted to hospital in 2005. 
Now, what do you notice about the shape of the graph? Do you see that it has a steep slope initially, but then has a flatter slope over here? Then it increases rapidly between these two points again, but flattens slightly after midnight. This is quite often to be expected with cumulative frequency graphs. A steep increase, followed by a flatter increase, and then a steep increase again. The slope of the graph tells us about how much increase there is between points of the graph. Here's another use for the cumulative frequency graph. We can read off the median and the upper and lower quartiles from it. Because the data is grouped into three hour intervals, we don't have the exact number of road accidents for every hour. So what we can do is to find the positions of the median and the upper and lower quartiles. Let me show you what I mean. Let's find the median position first. The number of values in our data set is 453 because that is the cumulative total. The median divides the data into two equal parts if the data is arranged in order. So to find the median, we need to find the value that is in the middle. The median position is the 227th value. There are 226 values on either side of the median. So to find the value of the median, we draw a line from the number 227 on the y-axis to the graph and join it to the x-axis. So the median value is in the class intervals of 1500 hours to 1800 hours. We can see that it is about 1700 hours or 5 p.m. The cumulative frequency up to this time of the day is 227. This tells us that by about 5 p.m., about half of the road accidents have taken place. And the other half of the road accidents happen after 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Let's see if the interquartile range is useful here. We find the position of the lower quartile and the upper quartile in the same way as we found the median position. They are in the position that divide the data below the median and above the median into halves. There are 226 values below the medium and 226 values above the median. So the lower quartile's position at 113,5 and the upper quartile's position is halfway between 453 and 227, which is 340,5. We can find the value of the lower quartile here at about 9 a.m. and the value of the upper quartile is here at about 9 p.m. So the interquartile range is from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. One half of the road accidents happened during this time. That was quite interesting. From those statistics, we can see when we need to be more careful on the roads. Remember to always wear your seatbelt, and if you're crossing the road, to check properly before doing so. You only live once, so be careful. Let's do another example together so that we can practice drawing and analyzing these graphs. This table represents the percentage of monthly income spent on petrol and groceries. Why don't you see if you can plot the cumulative frequency graph on your own? The first cumulative frequency value is 8. 8 plus 20 gives the second cumulative frequency of 28. 28 plus 12 gives us the third value of 40. 40 plus 8 gives 48, and 48 plus 2 is 50, which is also the total frequency. Now using this table, we are going to construct a cumulative frequency graph. The class intervals will always be on the x-axis, and the cumulative frequency on the y-axis. The coordinates of the points plotted is the upper boundary of the interval for x and the cumulative frequency, the value for y. So the points are 18 and 8, 24 and 28, 30 and 40, 36 and 48, and 42 and 50. Now let's plot these points. Here are the coordinates plotted on the graph. Notice that the x and y axes have been labelled and the graph has a title. Now let's join the points. Remember that this shape is called an ogive. We can use this to determine estimates for the quartiles of the data. The median, for example, is halfway up the y-axis. 
So at 25, we draw a horizontal dotted line until we touch the cumulative frequency graph. At that point, we draw a dotted vertical line down to the x-axis. This will give us an estimated median, or Q2, of 24,3. The lower quartile is the median of the lower half of the data. We draw a horizontal dotted line halfway between 0 and Q2 until we touch the ogive. Then we draw a vertical dotted line down to the x-axis. This shows us that Q1 is 20. We do the same process for the third quartile and find that Q3 equals roughly 29,3. All of these were estimated answers. Alternatively, we can use formulas to determine the position of the median, lower and upper quartiles and therefore have more accurate answers. To find the position of the median, we can use the formula half open brackets, n plus 1, close brackets, where n is equal to the total frequency. To find the lower and upper quartiles, we use similar formulae. To find the position of the lower quartile, we can use a quarter, n brackets, n plus 1. And to find the position of the upper quartile, we can use 3 quarters, n brackets, n plus 1. Thank you for joining us. Practice what you have learned by trying to do the questions on the Working with Statistics task video. You'll also be able to learn more about statistics on our website www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.